Okay, let's go. So, uh, bon, bon dia. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much to this university for inviting me. Uh, this is my first time in Brazil and I uh, enjoy a lot until now. <laughs> um, I'm not able to speak in uh, Portuguese. And um, also in English sometimes it's difficult for me because that's been one year now that I have not the opportunity to speak English. So I will try and we will see. Um, I will talk about you, uh, to you about um, uh, what I do since uh, a lot of years. I work on, um, I'm a plant ecologist and I work on the restoration of uh, grasslands. And um, that's meant now a lot of times. And I would like to show you another view of uh, different case studies. Um, and I hope that uh, it will give you some ideas and to possibility to collaborate of, on some uh, points because we always need to collaborate uh, to, have, to have better results uh, on restoration. So I will talk about uh, grassland, um, specific grasslands, grassland of the Mediterranean area. Uh, they are not uh, small spots, spots because in the Mediterranean area, in the Mediterranean basin, we've got more than uh, 63 millions of hectares of uh, dry grassland. Some of them are pristine ecosystem, and uh, some of them are um, more uh, substepic, but they are more semi-natural ecosystem. Uh, with a lot of uh, interaction with uh, traditional uh, agropastoral practice, like this uh, pig pasture in Portugal that we call Montedo. So perhaps you have heard about this type of uh, ecosystem. So um, it's, um, it's a huge challenge to, to restore this type of ecosystem in terms of uh, area, and not only in terms of um, uh, in specific, in a specific place. Um, what are the interests of this type of ecosystem, but like of other ecosystem? There are, of course, species-rich uh, ecosystems with a, a lot of uh, um, with a high species richness at a very small scale. The heterogeneity of a uh, grassy uh, layer is uh, very high with some very specific plant community like a biological crust. I don't know the name in Portuguese. It's very specific with a lot of lichens and uh, no, perhaps there is nothing, perhaps, in France, in France, in France it's tonsure. And, um, of course, we've got, we've got uh, in this type of ecosystem, a lot of rare and endemic uh, fauna species like bird, lizard, and insect. In general, um, this type of ecosystem, grassy ecosystem, are not so sexy than the tropical forests, for example. And uh, in terms of um, ecosystem services, it is clear that there is less uh, ecosystem services than in the uh, tropical forest or wetlands or pit bog and so on. But there is two very important and major points uh, concerning this service that they are uh, a source of fodder for a lot of herds and flocks of sheep, of uh, and other animals, and uh, we need vegetation, vegetation to fight against soil erosion. Uh, what are the major threats to this ecosystem? They are classical, a uh, lot of change in land use, agricultural intensification, and especially in, the, uh, North, in North Africa, uh, overgrazing. Uh, of course, climate change, warming, mid more aridification, and uh, especially in the south of France in the, and in the north of the Mediterranean, uh, all ecosystem fragmentation do uh, change in land use and industrialization, the construction of roads, channels, and so on. So a lot of trends. Uh, this is the global uh, context. And concerning our study site, uh, this is a study site. It is a real <laughs> open ecosystem because there is absolutely no trees. And uh, this ecosystem is the result of a particular climate, the Mediterranean climate or particular soil, and of course, uh, centuries, centuries of uh, traditional uh, practice such as uh, grazing, but uh, also uh, recurrent uh, uh, practice. And um, we tried to have an idea of what was this ecosystem. So it was in the south of France in the 70th century. So it looks like that. It was a kind of uh, desert. It was considered as the, uh, the only steppic ecosystem of uh, Western Europe, because perhaps you know that we've got some uh, steppic ecosystem in uh, Ukraine, in Russia, and so on, but not in the Western part of Europe. It looks like that. It takes two days to, uh, to cross, and uh, now it looks like that. Okay, so we have lost more than 80% of its typical ecosystem uh, because of uh, change in land use, uh, especially uh, uh, industrial orchards, more than uh, 4,000 hectares, some quarries, more than uh, three, three, uh, 300 hectares, and uh, um, we, ha we have a lot of impact of uh, industrialization of 
around this area and we have unfortunately expect uh, a pipeline leak in uh, 2009 which has destroyed several hectares. So this is our free uh, case study when we've got the, unfortunately, the opportunity to, 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 to restore. The first one was in the, uh, 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 this uh, intensive Oscars. It was uh, an operation created in the keys of mitigation banks. I don't know if you've got this type of law in Brazil. Uh, we expect the destruction and we prepare the destruction by restoring bef before <laughs> destroying another place. It's totally stupid, but <laughs> it's like that. And so the project was to, uh, to restore more, more than 300 hectares of uh, uh, typical grassland. Uh, to propose this mitigation to project that will uh, destroy uh, this typical ecosystem. So it was, uh, this was the situation in 2005. Uh, the orchards was abandoned, and this is what we call the degraded situ situation in, the, uh, in, uh, in restoration ecology because we lose, of course, all the typical species, all the typical cultural heritage of this ecosystem. And it's not so beautiful. <laughs> and you can see that without water, any tree is able to survive in this area. If you cut the water in three weeks, you lose all the, the trees. It could be an idea to destroy all these orchards in France. Uh, this is the situation when we start the uh, restoration uh, operation. So you can see that it was a huge operation because we removed more than 300,000 trees in total. So we spent a lot of food. Uh, at the end, this is the, the situation. We tried to recreate the flat area by uh, uh, level the, the, the soil. And uh, we let uh, the seed bank and the uh, seed red, you know what, certainly, <laughs> making its, uh, its area. There was no active restoration. It was passive restoration after the first uh, step. And for us, it was the end of the rehabilitation uh, phase. And we start on this situation, different kind of uh, uh, experimentation to speed up the process to go to the uh, pre-existing ecosystem the step area. So we realized several types of uh, experiments by uh, using what we call uh, nurse species, by hay transfer, by soil transfer, and uh, soil transfer and uh, hay transfer with topsoil removal. So we've got the opportunity to, to, to do all this operation. The total cost of this operation was um, uh, 12 million of euro. And we've got more than 200,000 euro to make our experiments. It was great. <laughs> and this is the final design. So it was a huge design. This is all the, the former orchards. And you can see all the different treatments. So for example, oops, you've got here the treatments, nurse species seedings, more than 60 hectares. A transfer mode, 20 hectares, salt on the 3 hectares, topsoil removal, 0 0.5 hectares. It costs more, so there is less possibility to... So you can enjoy the, enjoy the design. It's uh, for someone who works in ecological restoration. It's a so good opportunity to test at the, at the scale of, uh, of the, 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 the management, the, our theory. It's not only several square meter. It's uh, concerned a, a very huge area. And of course, at the end of the uh, restoration operation, we put again the two flocks of uh, 800 sheep, which is the traditional management in this area. Okay, so do we have some results? Uh, after several years, we, um, the first results are clear that we were not able, all the different treatments were not able to recreate uh, the species composition, the species richness, the evenness, the uh, equipartition, all you want of the uh, typical ecosystem. But the local name is Kusu. Kusu is from the Latin, cursorium, a place that you can, when you can cross. Okay? And so you can see here that um, we <laughs> still not uh, have a lot of success, but all the treatments, they go to the reference. So perhaps it's just a question of times, okay? But it's, um, it's clear that the treatment, the more strong treatment, uh, uh, soil transfer and uh, soil removal will be perhaps the best solution, okay? And we test this uh, treatment, top soil removal, for all the other treatments, and the hypothesis was good. Because when we, um, when we remove the soil with all the former uh, fertilizer and pesticide, we speed up the process for the restoration to the typical uh, plant community of the, of the step. But of course, you can imagine the cost of remove the soil and for uh, more than 300 hectares. It is not sustainable. What we will do with this soil? The soil is polluted, polluted by fertilizer, potassium, phosphorus, and pesticide. So this is the result of our first experiment, and the lesson is <laughs> even if you've got a lot of money, if you've got, even if you've got a lot of technology, 
it will not mean that you will uh, success your restoration in the short term. First message. Or we are totally stupid. Second message. <laughs> Uh, the second case study, it's totally different. Unfortunately, it's, uh, we expected uh, this uh, pipeline leak. It was in 2009, it was a terrible accident. You can see the, uh, an idea, it was terrible, uh, dangerous. Uh, but perhaps you know this uh, famous comics, Tintin, Tintin et Milou. No, I don't know the name in, in Portuguese, so <laughs> forget it. And uh, it's, it's a uh, typical uh, comics in France. And so the situation was uh, very dangerous. And this is the, uh, the end after this is the, 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 the accident was here. And you can see that we've got here petrol. And the petrol destroyed more, more than five hectares of this uh, typical steppe ecosystem. You can see here the different pipeline. The accident was here. OK. And uh, of course, they ask us to, um, to restore this area. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> And so, because of uh, the risk of pollution, the first step was to, to remove all the soil. They remove 72,000 uh, tons of polluted soil. The total cost of um, the depollution and of uh, rehabilitation is around 48 million of euros. It's uh, terrible, terrible, terrible. And so you can see that they create uh, the surface of the moon, something like that, on five hectares, and all this polluted soil go to a specialized, uh, specialized dump. And the idea was not, and the, the, our objective was, not, was now to restore, to rehabilitate for biodiversity and so on, the vegetation as it was before the accident. And so we choose this opportunity that, you remember peut-être the first pictures, that there were some uh, uh, quarries uh, not so far from the oil spill accident, only four kilometers. And you can see here the former uh, orchards. This is the, uh, uh, the conventional orchards under exploitation, and this is our experiment. So it was not far from our, we escaped the accident in our experimental uh, design. And so we chose to use some soil that was destroyed here in the quarry because to, um, to increase the um, exploitation, they destroy the soil and they do nothing with the soil. The soil is not uh, very good for used in uh, agriculture. And so it was possible to have uh, five uh, uh, hectares of soil of the same uh, plant community with the same geology, pedology, same properties. We make a lot of analyze to be sure about that. So we use more than 2,000 um, lorries to uh, catch the soil and use the soil here. It looks like that. We decide to recreate the soil as it was before the accident. So we uh, recreate the organization of a different layer that we call the bedrock, the bedrock uh, which have been uh, uh, impact by uh, natural erosion, the mineral subsoil, the, the organic subsoil. And in fact, we recreate in several hours the pedology of 10,000 years. Okay, so it was a great challenge. <laughs> That's a challenge for God, please, <laughs> in, in several days to recreate a soil, the result, an ecosystem that has uh, exact, uh, exists for, for uh, a millennium. Okay, and um, as a scientist, we've got the possibility to try to, to experiment different uh, technique and uh, different uh, organization of, um, of, uh, of the soil. And this is uh, the, 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 the design. Um, the most important thing is that we transfer the soil in spring, of course, because of the seeds, because of, uh, of, of the plants, because of uh, whatever. We do a direct translocation nor stocking pile, because with stocking pile you will catch all the uh, non-target species, animal growth species, and so on. The ratio was when we destroy one hectare, we recreate one hectare, and of course we respect as much as possible the former vertical organization. And so you can imagine how it was complicated to organize that, because you have to, um, um, to, to, keep, to cut each layer of soil in the donor site and to reorganize the different layer in the, in the uh, soil uh, in restoration. So I've got some pictures. Fortunately for me, it was possible to take a plane. And uh, you can see, okay, this, this operation, this is the, the, the plan for the depollution of the water because there is still some, uh, some, uh, some oil in the water. So you can see here the different layer of soil. And you can see here our, our, our plots of experiments. I, will, um, I, have, I like when I have an impact that I can see from the sky. And this is the female uh, operation, and uh, this is the, the control plot, this is the reference ecosystem, and this is different uh, treatments. 
and uh, another view several years before. So it was a success. We've got some uh, vegetation, but now <laughs> is it the same vegetation? That was the question. So we have realized a lot of um, a lot of analyze of a lot of things, especially the soil. And it was clear that with this methodology, to have the possibility to catch the same soil to transport to transport the soil in the same day without any stock spying, of course, we'll have very nice results, especially in the upper layer of the soil, because you will conserve all the function of the soil, most of them. Okay? Here, for example, is a basal respiration of the soil, and there was no significant difference three years after with the upper layer of a reference ecosystem. And if you use uh, other material, especially material without uh, organic material inside, the result will be totally different. Concerning the vegetation, we've got the same type of result than in the case, first case study. This is the reference step ecosystem after three years of monitoring different uh, plots and so on. I will give you no details in the methodology, but if you've got some questions, be sure it has been published as that we make good statistic replication and so on. And again, the result is that uh, the different treatment, it's okay, they will go to the reference, but again, we've got uh, this oscillation. It's, it's clear that in restoration, restoration ecology, the straight line is not the shortest path to restore. So, and when we've got results, we say we, we miss something, we miss something to speed up this process. We miss something to speed up this process. We've, we've got a lot of methodology. We were able to catch the soil, the same soil, from a place to another place but we are still not able to, to restore all the complexity of the plant community, uh, species composition, species structure, and so on. So perhaps we, we, we missed something. And um, it was possible, of course, after the restoration to put again the flock, so it was not a problem of uh, grazing, but perhaps we miss another animal, another plant, that we call ecosystem engineers. And we expect that perhaps the ecosystem engineers we missed in this ecosystem was the, some ants. We've got two ants from uh, Mesor barbarus. Mesor means uh, uh, ants that are able to, to cultivate. They eat seeds. Most, most of the plants, 70% of the plants of this plant community have the seed transport by, by these ants. They are able to, um, uh, uh, to create refuse by uh, each way. They are able to transport the seeds the, the, the mean distance is 10 meters, but they are also able to transport on the record is around 30 to 50 meters. You can imagine for one small uh, hand. For us, it's like to do more than 10 kilometers. Wonderful. So this is our, our, our ecosystem engineers. So uh, we catch them. Uh, after the reproduction, we catch what we call the um, founder, founder queens which have uh, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this queen, and we put them in this, in this small eprouvette. Uh, uh, tubes. Thank you, so, so easy. <laughs> in these tubes, they can stay in these tubes several months. You put them in the fridge, okay, and they, they say nothing when we take them. Uh, it seems like it. And after, we use them to, um, to, uh, to, 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 to put them in the restoration area, okay, as, uh, as you can see here, okay. And we measure the success when we've got the first eggs. It is uh, several weeks after, if you do that in spring, or several months if you do that in, in autumn. It's very easy to do. It costs nothing, because you've got millions of, uh, of uh, fonder queens available. Millions. It's a right. so very common species. So the result. After two years, we see that the transplanting was a, a success because the uh, uh, transport success was higher in the restored area than in the reference. So it was strange. More success in the restored area than in the reference. But it's just because here there is less predation. All the predation, the spider, the other ants had been killed during the transfer of the soil. And so here there is more predation, especially from spider. So now we can explain when we've got more success at the beginning. So it was at the beginning, so it is possible to use and to transfer a hand for, not for, because this ant is uh, rare, it's a very common species, but uh, to, to test if this ant will have a significant impact on the restoration of the, or reorganization of, uh, uh, of the ecosystem. And so it's a chance because we just have the result several weeks before, after eight years, because it takes time, Ants are not a, a civil machine and so on. 
and this is the first result which has not been uh, published yet. Uh, the species richness is higher in the end patch created by the different nest. You can see it's this significant. The biomass is really uh, higher in the rest of that site. Uh, and also the microlocal heterogeneity measured by uh, the Bray-Curtis and ice. So it's, it's wonderful. It's a really a, uh, an incredible success. You can imagine that. It was just at the beginning one from the queen put in a place. And now, eight years after, it's not a lot of time considering ecology. They, they have been able to transform this ecosystem and to speed up the process for the restoration. I can give you um, an overview of that by this uh, uh, redundant uh, analytical analysis. This is the unfree patch in the restored site, which is uh, characterized by a lot of amount of clay because of the different uh, angi we use to put the, the soil. And the ants were able to transform vegetation. This is not, not the same vegetation where you've got some nest uh, in comparison where there is no nest. They transform totally the soil. They, really uh, increase soil fertility and it's really clear there is no doubt it's too much wonderful sometimes so i hope that the reviewer of the journal of applied ecology will say that too but uh, they transform totally the, the soil and now the last question is how many times uh, this hand patch will be close to the hand patch of the reference tape but really we, we speed up the, 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 the process and there is no data here about the the, the area but it's, um, uh, it's a kind of um, exponential process when you use hands. After several years, you've got uh, sexual individuals and you have new colonies, okay? And it speed up very, very uh, strongly. Okay, this is the, the second case study. And so the main message is, okay, we can use ecosystem engineers. It is important to recognize them, to, um, to make good manipulation. You have to take care. It's not because you use uh, ecosystem engineer that it's not dangerous. Remember what we do in Australia and so on with uh, rabbits and with uh, uh, the fox and so on. So perhaps using ecosystem en engineers could be a good way to speed up restoration and to do a sustainable restoration because really it costs nothing. Only massagery. <laughs> And the last uh, the case study is uh, the restoration of, uh, of quarry. I know that we, you've got this uh, case in, in this area. We've got, unfortunately, brick quarries in this area. Uh, this is the situation. Remember, this is our uh, reference ecosystem, this typical and uh, incredible, beautiful landscape. <laughs> and um, this is the situation before 1983. This is the situation in 1983 creation of uh, this, uh, this quarry, as you can see, with this, uh, this uh, incredible landscape. This is the quarry, and you can see that you've got here two pieces of uh, concrete here, okay? This is uh, because I have been able to do the same pictures several years after, and so here, okay? And you can see the, the impact of the destruction in the, points, in the points where the, the, the quarry were, but you can, see, you can see that we've got new quarry, and you can see here all this intensive Orchards. So, in fact, the landscape has totally changed. And sometimes, unfortunately, even after the end of the exploitation, they, they, they put some uh, uh, over industry for transform the material, for example, to produce uh, macadam. So, again, it's uh, pictures of 1983. It was more difficult for me to find the exact point, but here we've got a kind of uh, path, you see. And uh, I think I have found the same situation. So, you can see. The destruction has totally uh, transformed the former ecosystem. There is no, no reference. This is what we call um, uh, re uh, uh, novel ecosystem. We have lost a lot of, of our uh, species richness of, uh, of uh, endemic species, but we have created a new ecosystem. Don't forget that it was a dry Mediterranean area, and now you've got some, uh, some water, temporary pond. You've got some uh, forest. It's different. So perhaps before restoring, before uh, trying to go to the former uh, reference step that we call the historical step. Perhaps before doing that, because that made now 30 years that this uh, quarry was uh, abandoned, perhaps it's interesting to have a look. Uh, is there new species, interesting species, what is their functioning? So we do that, a kind of big uh, ecological diagnosis. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm more on uh, uh, more involved in soil than in vegetation some, sometimes, but of course make uh, inventories of fauna and flora and of uh, habitat to have an idea of what has been created 
in this area after the abandonment of the quarry. First surprise, of course, considering the different habitats in the quarries, there is more different habitat than in the stepic area. In the stepic area, you've got one type of habitat, a global habitat, which is steppe vegetation. And in the quarry, look that, you've got different, an incredible diversity of different habitats. 55% uh, are still open, of course, but even in a climate, Mediterranean climate and in a very dry area, we have created uh, some uh, riparian forest, even wetlands, which are really new in this habitat, 40, 42 new habitats. So we do the same job for vegetation. So again, we find, of course, at the same area, comparing replication and so on, blah, blah, blah. We send the same number of uh, more, more species in the quarries, but if you've got more species, but if these species are invasive species, no gain. And we saw that we've got more um, uh, species with patrimonial value, uh, rare species, threatened species, 20 against 11. Do we need to restore? <laughs> so at the end, we've got also the possibility to do a more um, uh, small scale approach of this different area because we found pictures again. We've got a lot of change when we've got this very uh, important picture. Here you can see the, the, the quarry. And here you can see that already in this period, they do uh, topsoil spreading, wonderful. And you can see where it has been done very precisely. This is a, a chip fold. So the pictures with the area will be easy to, uh, to recognize. So all this area with uh, soil spreading, topsoil, uh, which have input, and in this area, no topsoil. So I tried to do the same uh, pictures in 2015, and you can see the result. This is the former chip fall, the new quarry, which is here now, and you can see here this is the new ecosystem, very different, and here with the topsoil spreading a community that can be very interesting to have a look to this community because we've got 15 years after topsoil removal. It's very rare to have, to, to have the opportunity to test that. In general, we do the topsoil removal, so we are able to follow, to follow the, the, uh, the, the impact for one, two, three years. It depends on the PhD if it's good or not. <laughs> and so the result is that, ah, okay, if you compare just the species richness, but also the similarity and so on, it's clear that when we have uh, the area, uh, when uh, soil spreading has been done, is close to the reference step. So that means when we use, of course, the soil, the former soil, we are more able to, to, to restore. So this is the end of, um, of a, a third case study. And another message is, uh, do we need always to do active restoration to uh, recreate an ecosystem that has been totally transformed, totally destroyed. Perhaps there is new opportunities. Perhaps sometimes you can, we can really um, make good inventories in this uh, new ecosystem. Perhaps we will save a lot of money. So I think this is the end of my times. My general conclusion, my third, uh, my uh, take-home message. <laughs> uh, it is very difficult to, uh, to restore uh, the uh, entire, the global, uh, global ecosystem, even if you've got a lot of money and a lot of technology. And really, we've got a lot of money to do that. And really, I hope we've got a good methodology and we are able to do the good things. Perhaps not, but we, we hope. But in the short term, it was clearly impossible. If got, even if you've got the soil, if you've got, if, if you've got the possibility to transfer the soil. And don't forget, when you transfer the soil, you try to restore in one point, but you destroy in the first point. It's what we call the Shadok uh, restoration in France. But I don't know if you know the Shadok in, uh, in uh, Brazil. Sometimes passive restoration can produce interesting novel ecosystem. We really need to think about that because new ecosystem in, in general it means uh, 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 less ecosystem services, less social utilization, uh, less uh, species richness and so on. But it is the first time after the abandonment of the impact. In general, uh, 10 years, but 20 years after the impact, new species, new ecosystem are on their trajectory. And at the hand, of course, because uh, ecological restoration costs a lot, and that will have uh, uh, less and less money to restore, especially in Brazil. <laughs> you, uh, perhaps it's a promising tool for a more sustainable restoration, using hands, using other animals, using other plants. So perhaps collaboration with our two countries could be on these uh, three, three ideas. Thank you very much for your attention.